recently I acquired a GoPro Hero 9 mainly for use at the RC field where I fly and while I was tinkering around with some of the capabilities I looked into the GPS features and found out that you could actually do GPS gauge overlays with Hero 9 GPS data. I've used GoPros for quite a number of years and I never knew that. I've just never experimented with it because I normally don't use GoPro inside RC aircraft. I use them as a field recording device so it never occurred to me to think about the GoPro for action oriented movement and telemetry data. However, after I got the Hero 9 black and started looking at some of the options, I found out that one of the main challenges right now is that the Hero 9 black telemetry data does not seem to work with the tools that are out there that allow you to extract GPS data and create the gauges that you need for overlay. So I've done some tinkering and I found a way around it to make it work. And what I'm doing right now is there's a lake close to where I live and I'm driving around that lake right now and there's the ability to record lap times for those of you who are interested in, in running laps. So what I'm going to do is drive around the lake just a couple of times and I'll record some data and I'll call out my speeds just to match it up and see how accurate it is compared to the speedometer in my car. So right now my speedo says I'm doing about 42, 44 miles an hour. Yep, 44 miles an hour. And uh, I'm going to speed up and slow down just a little bit. And I'm also going to apply some brakes. So here comes some brakes. Because apparently there's an accelerometer feature that can be measured as well. So I'll step on the gas now. And we slowed down to 31. Now we're jumping back up to about 48. So I just want to do one or two laps around this lake to see if we can get a lap count and see if we can get a lap time. And then I also want to make sure that we'll be able to get the speed data off the GPS sensor as well. I don't expect any changes in elevation or altitude, which is what I'll be very interested in getting the first time I get a chance to fly with the Hero 9 in an aircraft. But for now, I'll have to live with the fact that we've got telemetry data and we've been able to overlay it on a video. And I will just go ahead and apologize up front for the fact that this is not very good footage because I'm driving at night around an unlit lake. But I'll drive down a busy street too just so you can see the camera at nighttime as well. But it's not the video at this point that's important. What's important is the data gathering and the telemetry overlay and that's what you're going to be the most interested in. So the first half of the video is just getting out in the vehicle and driving around and collecting data so that we have telemetry data to work with. And then the second half of the video will be to overlay that data on top of the video and show you how I did it. So we're getting, we're probably about three quarters of the way around that first lap of the lake and I'm at 54 miles an hour right now which is a little fast but you know it's very late <laughs> very late or early depending on your point of view so there's nobody out here right now just me so I'm going to apply some brakes again to see if we can get that deceleration measurement and there's brakes all the way down to about 20 miles an hour 23 miles an hour and now we're accelerating I'm going to accelerate hard and there's acceleration up to about 54 again. I accelerated kind of rapidly because I wanted to see if the accelerometer picked up that motion and showed it to me because one of the gauges available in Dashware is braking and acceleration. And I know for those of you who are interested, especially if you're interested in surface craft or biking or motorcycling or bicycling or boats, that might be interesting to you. Okay, we should be coming up on the end of the first lap right about now. Okay, that's at least one full lap with the recorder on. So now I'm going to take a turn and go down a busy street and we'll see if we can get a little bit better lighting from the camera. This will also give me a chance to do a little bit more braking and more acceleration. 
Okay, full stop down to zero. And accelerating up to 52 miles an hour. Okay, this should be sufficient data for the telemetry and for the gauge application in the software. So I'm gonna turn the camera off now. I'll head back to the house and we'll get this video processed and we'll see if we can get this telemetry working for the GoPro footage. In order to get started, you wanna to go to dashware.net. I'll put the link in the description so you know how to get there and then click on the download button. Scroll down to the bottom and under the EULA, agree to that, the terms of use, the privacy policy, and then download the software. Once you've downloaded it, run the install and you'll be left with the dashware.net install. Once you have Dashware installed, we'll start it up and then we'll click File, New Project. Under Project Templates, select the correct template for your location. In my case, it's Imperial Units. And then I'll hit OK. And once that's done, I'll show you first the Hero 5 video, which works fine with Dashware, no problem. So I'll hit video and you can see I've got some Hero 5 data captured right here. I just did a quick walk around the driveway. And you can see when it does the import, it says choose data port profile GoPro. When I hit add, it automatically adds the GPS track from that data file. So when I hit play, you can see over here on the side, the miles per hour, that's just me walking around. So I'm taking a little walk and you can see I've got telemetry data here, no problem. So the GoPro Hero 5, you don't need to do anything special. The problem is with the GoPro Hero 9 data. So I will delete this footage. I will delete this data file. And now we'll go and import our GoPro Hero 9 data. This is the truck data from the video, GX010113. So when I click that, this is the problem you get with GoPro Hero 9 data extraction, it failed. So we'll click OK on that, and you can see that my video is upside down. I'll flip that, and here's the raw video, but the gauges are not working. So this is the thing we have to fix. In order to do that, we'll go back to our browser, and we'll go to this link, goprotelemetryextractor.com, and again, I'll put this link in the video. Come down to the bottom and hit free, choose file, go into your desktop, wherever you have your video located, and upload it to telemetryextractor.com. It'll just take a few minutes, and while they've done that, they've already recognized that this is Hero 9 Black. I want to click on the Stream GPS, Lat Long Altitude 2D Speed 3D Speed. We'll click on that, and then we'll export the GPX data file right here, GPX data. I've tried other ones like the CSV file and it doesn't work. Verb edit does work in verb, by the way. If you're familiar with using verb, it does work in verb as well. Okay, you can see I've got a little CSV file downloaded to my downloads folder. So we will show that in, my, in the folder and I'm going to copy that to my desktop. And then in my desktop, need to move that into my working folder. Okay, so now I've got everything together. I'll go back into Dashware now, and we're gonna add that data file that we just created on that telemetry extractor. So click Browse, and then click on that CSV file, and then you notice the data profile type is automatically selected as GPX. Now hit Add. Okay, the next thing we have to do after importing this data is we have to synchronize it to the video. So we'll click the synchronization tab and I'll put both pieces at the very beginning and we'll click sync with video. And now that we've done that, as we move the scrubber, you should see the speed changing on the screen with the truck moving around the road. Okay, so when I hit play, there we go. And now the cool part is you can change these gauges to your liking. So if you don't like these, you can just delete them Click the gauge, delete, and then under gauge toolbox, you can drag gauges on that you do want. So if you want to have, say, this big white speedometer, you can drag that. And the, I'll point out that the, uh, the gauge drag function is a little kludgy. Sometimes it gives you the wrong gauge, but that's okay. Just a little bit of patience and you can work it out. So there you go. There's the speedometer. And then 
here's a throttle brake gauge that shows the accelerometer information for acceleration and braking. This one's not perfect, but it's pretty good. I was surprised at how good it actually is. So it shows braking frequently when I'm not braking. I'm just driving. I'm not sure about that. I guess that has to do with uh, what the accelerator is reading. It might have something to do with the lateral movement too. Might be picking that up as a brake. That was definitely a slowdown. And now you'll see the throttle should kick in as I speed up. Yeah, there you go. And there's a handful of other gauges that you can use if you want. Um, let's see, there's, there's a lap time gauge. Um, you can put that in if you want to and show your lap times. And if you want to do lap times, by the way, and I did show that in the video, you can go under synchronization. And then in my case, we call this because I was going around a lake. We'll say this was a closed course and that eliminates the finish option. And then we hit set start finish. And one area I, I had a real problem with was under edit data settings. It's set to ignore the first lap and the last lap. And since I only did two, it was never showing me my laps. But if you un unclick the last lap, ignore the last lap, then as you pass the start line, which is right here indicated by that hollow circle, and we drive past that, you'll see the lap increment to lap number two. So that works with any of the gauges that have a lap counter. So feel free to experiment with the different gauges. Some of them work, some of them don't. Depends on the telemetry data that you have. In the original video, I put this tape miles per hour gauge on the side just to kind of give it that aircraft kind of feel. So imagine, you know, getting this data off of a Hero 9 that's been flying. You can apply this tape miles per hour gauge and you'll get the speed represented like you would in, in an aircraft. And here's another one that's a UAV data listing, black and white, and you can see it's got speed, max speed, altitude from takeoff. That one's not displaying properly, it looks like. Altitude, sea level, and feet, that one is probably accurate. And then distance traveled and heading degrees. So it's not perfect, but there are things you can use in terms of telemetry from the GoPro Hero 9. So the cool thing about this is that we now have data extracted from GoPro Hero 9 footage that actually works. It does not work natively in Quick, and it does not work natively in Dashware. You do have to do the GPS extraction in that website that I showed you earlier. I'll have links for that in the description. You do need to make sure your GoPro GPS is turned on and that this GPS indicator is white. That ensures that you have a lock. And once you have that white lock on on your GPS, then everything that I showed you here should work. All right, that's all I've got on how to extract GoPro telemetry data from GoPro Hero 9 footage. I hope you liked the content. If you did, please hit that subscribe button and a notification bell so you know when new material hits the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen.